Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. So, what have I been up to? I've been stitching my heart out. Okay, let me start at the beginning. Everything additional in the way of crocheted elements and lace was pinned on in the last video. The little flowerettes that came from my mother's wedding dress um, lace, <clears throat> I trimmed them down because they had all these little spiky bits from where I cut them out. It's just so that it's a clean little flower. They're now stitched in. Um, I stitched the lace at the bottom here and the piece of gold trim. Um, and I finished all of the leaves just with a, a gentle little stitching through with a brown thread. And then I started working on the rose. Now, if you remember in the video last, cast your mind back, I cut out these pieces of lace and I was fiddling around with them thinking that I could potentially stitch them into the, the base of this rose, like so. I just wasn't quite sure, so I ended up just putting them to one side and I started satin stitching in the actual rose. <clears throat> and then when I got to this petal, I was like, well, let's go hunting. And I found another lace that matches my colors. It's a hand dyed lace that I picked up from a store that no longer exists in Brisbane actually. Um, and the owner used to do all of this hand dyed lace. And when I was journal making, I, I was always picking up a little piece of it here and there, different colors. So <clears throat> I found this and I cut out one little motif there and then trimmed it to size to fit into there. So the petal, where's the fabric? Hang on, let me show you the rose in its original, <clears throat> original state from the fabric. So you'll see what it was and what it's become. Okay, so there's the rose in its original state. So <clears throat> I've made it more of a simplistic view compared to what it was because it was, um, there's so many little petals within there. I just stitched them in. So I have lost that shading that the rose had, but then I've sort of made it more of a, I guess, slow stitch piece by just primitive stitching in the shape of the rose. And then I added in the little pieces of lace, there's four there. The final petal, <coughs> this down here, I thought, no, I'm gonna stop now and stitch it in as if it was the primitive rose that was in behind. So. I just love it because I've got three different styles of stitching. I've got the original rose, I've then got this thread painting, and then I've got texture coming in as in collaging. So I'm really, really happy with it. I love the colors. I think in the video I had chosen, the video prior had chosen that DMC thread. I didn't end up using it. I might pop it back now because I, I didn't use it when I went to sit down and actually start stitching I felt like I needed a more robust thread selection so I went hunting and I found this Appleton wool and a Sue Spargo thread they're just a little bit thicker it's sort of anything too fine on these denim jackets just seems to just disappear so I've got to be a little bit bolder in my thread choice when selecting um, threads to embroider. So the rose is done. The buds, I just used the brown thread and highlighted the brown areas that the printer had, you know, used when creating the fabric. So there's sort of a mix of what it was and what it's become, I guess. So I want to cover two things in today's video. I want to start working on this little guy. The other thing I want to do <clears throat> is work on some more of the border. Now, 
I've stitched on the first piece, this guy, that finished just past the side seam. Then I came back through with a second piece of lace and that was long enough to get all the way around to there. Okay, <clears throat> and I cut it. So what I've done is that second piece of lace, I have stitched as far as where this one was. So this is still unattached. And the reason I've done that is I really need to find myself, I'm gonna unpin it now. I need to find myself some more edging that I can use to get me around to the other side. And then this piece goes over the top of it. So I couldn't go ahead and um, stitch it down because I'd lose the opportunity to pop a smaller one in first. Does that make sense? So I'm just gonna unpin it. And the things on my lap as I'm stitching and every so often I'm getting a jab from the pins along here. So I thought before I get back into that bird, I need to deal with this and get this edging all finished. So that's the plan first. All right, so there's the big lace attached and that's where the little lace finished. So, went hunting and I found another runner with a little, little lace. I found this one here. This one caught my eye and I thought, there you go, you're done. And off I toddled to bed that night. And then I'm like, come back out this morning. And I thought, oh, I'll just go for another look, get something different. And I found that. And I thought, oh, that'd be nice. Bring another lace in. And I also found this, which I love. These are just ones that I picked up at a garage sale. It was like a whole pile of them. Actually, a friend of mine did. They were out at a garage sale looking for something for themselves and saw this bucket of doilies. And um, I think they got the whole lot for $20. And it's just been sitting <clears throat> in my room in a container and I haven't looked at it for probably 18 months because I've got plenty. But I went looking and I found this and I thought, I wonder if this would manipulate out to become straight. And I thought this particular one would be nice down here but I'm not sure if she'll hang straight but I did also like this one just to soften the other side and make it completely different does that make sense so I'm going to first of all detach some of these now if that attaches in I'll use this edge here underneath of course to stitch on. So I'm going to detach back here, give myself plenty of meat, this to, meat to stitch with. <laughs> oh, that's probably not the right word, but you know what I mean. Plenty of edge there that I can use to, I'm gonna cut through here. These little, these little stars, they're fantastic for adding into pieces, just little shapes and so this doily now will be flung to the side of me and just join the pile of goodies that I randomly search through. Now what I might do is I won't, or will I? What am I thinking? Use your big words. Yeah, no, that's that's all good. I've got my corner. I thought I had jiggered it up. My lace was upside down in my hand, but it's okay. I can still get a corner out of this. Let's go around the corner. You'll see what I mean in a moment. And that can be tucked in under the jacket, trim back as needed. So that would go on there. I really like it. Okay, now this little guy, let's just let's just detach him. I probably wouldn't need that full length, 
but I don't know, we'll see. Let's just get him broken down. They smell so nice. So whoever was putting them out that day at that garage sale or a state star sale, I think some of you call them, where a household has a, a little store or sets all their unwanted goods out. And then on a Saturday morning, everyone goes around once they find the address. I think you call them estate sales. We call them garage sales because they're often set up in the garage. Okay, lovely little morsel. Fling that to the side, into the abyss that is. <laughs> Fling that one over there. <laughs> I need to actually revamp my little stash of bits and bobs. I'm going to now break it down some more. So for those of you who have seen these little motifs pop up, and I must remember there's a motif I need still with that bird because there's a section that I just felt like it, um, yeah, see, I suspected that when she crocheted this, whoever has reduced it to get it to come into a circle. And I thought that may not work so much there. I think this might end up being along the bottom because if it's drapey, I'm okay with that. The question is, what will that look like? So let's assume, let's pin it. Okay. All right. Let's just make some decisions here, girl. Let's get ourselves into position there. Now, a few of you have um, commented, what are you going to do when you button it up? Well, I didn't get the jacket in a size that would button up. In Queensland, to wear a jacket is a rare thing. And if you do, it's really just to break the breeze or break the cool weather. And often just a, a thicker fabric shirt is enough to survive winter. And if you did need a jacket, let's say you went into, like even if I went home to the farm, it gets down to, you know, three degrees. But here in Brisbane, I don't think I've ever seen it three degrees. And we're close to the coast where my dad's farm is inland. So he gets that cooler, cooler climate. So... I guess what I'm saying is with a heavier fabric t-shirt, maybe a long sleeve t-shirt type fabric, and then a cardigan or a jacket over you is plenty. And by the time the sun comes up and starts warming things up, you probably even take that off. I live in a crocheted or knitted cardigan that has a lot of holes in it. It's sort of like this. Um, it comes down past my bottom, so my kidneys get that little bit extra warmth. And I pretty much live in that all day. And underneath, I can have a singlet and a lightweight chiffony top. And that's plenty. So if I did have this jacket wearing, it'd have to be night, it'd have to be cold. And I would not button it up because even the cold's not cold enough. Does that make sense? So don't worry if you're thinking that I was going to, it would, you know, I'd be covering that with that. This jacket, the best I'll ever get it is about that far apart. It just is not coming together to secure, to be warm. I'd have something else underneath and then uh, a scarf or something. So don't stress, it's just not that type of climate. And seriously, if I did go anywhere where it what am I trying to do? I want to work on the bottom. If I did go anywhere where it was going to be cold, this just wouldn't go. I'd probably upgrade it to something even more. Oh, I love that. Oh, yes. Oh, you beautiful thing. I think I love the, the add-on pieces <laughs> more so. Then the, how are we going to join that corner? I don't think I want to come out there. I think I want to come just into there. Yeah, I think I love the add-on lace to the jacket more so than the 
<laughs> the piece on the front. I always knew one day I'd be swanning around in a doily. <laughs> I've finally got my, my swan around in doily mode. Let's get this little guy on. I guess the question next is, will the piece that's coming around the back still work with it? Looks like I've got two two similar sized pieces but you know I want to keep it a bit random piece of lace attached to me I want to keep it a bit random I didn't want it to be too uniformed so at every angle you glance at me you see something a little bit different devil in the detail as they say oops oops oh sorry fling the sleeve at you let's see where this finishes so pretty isn't it I like how it's going to be drapey I need more pins hang on Get some more pins in here I've been swanning around the house in it <laughs> I still want to wear it that's a good thing I remember I was like oh what if I go and do all this and I never wear it I'm gonna wear it it's all good I'm, I love it I love it I think too, I was telling my friend, um, I'm not going to do too much more embroidery. I think that's the point, the tipping point for me to actually wear it. If it becomes something full on, I just think it's going to be limited in what I can wear it with. Where at the moment, it's just a blue jacket with a hint of something on it. Where if I was to go full on with birds everywhere and that I'd probably be only wear it with a white top or a black top a navy top and jeans like I couldn't put something underneath other than something plain does that make sense I don't know maybe I'm overthinking it oh look at that oh yeah <laughs> oh oh gosh guys I love it I love it, I love it, I love it. Let's see what this looks like. Maybe this is going to be terminated at that seam. Where are we at? So there's the side seam. How does that sit? Yeah, see, it, it, it finishes. So but that's okay. We've got an opportunity now. Maybe that just comes in. Do I find something else that can drift? Let's just pin it. Gosh, I, I even got very brave this morning and I picked up a, a doily the size of, say, a small dinner plate, folded it in half and looked at that at the front, at the fabric, as if I had the doily hanging. Thinking, just stop, girl. You, you're turning into a walking dinner, uh, a walking buffet with doilies hanging off of you. It actually looked like it had fallen off of a buffet and attached to my clothing as I was passing. It looked funny. So that does come in there quite nicely. If I was to cease the one and start the other, maybe. Let's have a look. Oh, gosh, this is hard work, this clothing business, isn't it? So that would drift through to there. That would drift through to there. I think I might have an opportunity to bring something in through here. I picked up some other ones, didn't I? That was a pretty one, too. Getting it to sit so that it is easy for you guys to see what the hang I'm up to. Okay, so that's where that one finishes. Isn't it pretty? <clears throat> this is where this one's coming along and it's the base underneath this guy. And I think...
that would have to terminate because that is overpowering it. The two are competing, so to speak. So that gives me the opportunity of bringing in another little guy. And with that little guy, blend into that little guy. Oh, I think it might. Or this little guy. He gets a bit lost. He's very fine. I need something bold like this. I need a little fella too. I, I could stitch that on the jacket because see where this leaf just ends? I need something just to drift in here to hide the fact that the leaf just ends, which it does on the print, but it looks a little bit odd to me. So I'm thinking now I'm going to detach there. That gives me that semicircle as a bit of strength to stitch into. There's a bit of a curve on this, so that will give a nice draping gathered feel because it's so oblong, this little doily. I've got myself some new little motifs. There's three in the middle and a heap around the outside. So this one will get broken down and added to my stash. But yeah, if you're wondering how I get all my motifs and that, this is, this is it. These, these doilies were mass produced. They're everywhere in our thrift stores, op shops in Australia. Um, I remember going to a, a party plan, like it was a linen party. And these were by the hundreds to pick from. Doily sets, duchess sets. Um, sit them over the end, back of your couch was a bit of a 70s thing to protect your couch where you could take this off and, you know, wash it from oils that may have come from your, your hair onto your couch. So it was used as a bit of a, a protector. But um, I actually had one of those linen parties as my kitchen tea before I was married as a bit of a get together. You have a hen's party. I had a hen's party in Brisbane with my younger friends at my house. We just had a big barbecue and just sat around and giggled all night. Um, but I had a hen's tea party in the afternoon in my hometown in the town hall. So my mum and her friends and my old school friends, we sort of just got together at the CWA hall next to the big hall and had a linen tea party. And you could purchase tablecloths and things like that. And it was really good because I got quite a bit of credit from the host of that party, which I then used to buy some tea towels and you know I was just starting out my home and I didn't have a lot of bits and bobs so it was really good because I got a couple of tablecloths and things like that all of that linen I bought on that day I've still got in a, a linen wrap it was like a calico big rectangle and all the linen sits in it and it just folds around and ties it all together and I've kept it all together because I've, I've resisted the urge to to go chopping into it because it's sort of that memory of that time so yeah now I think so I've stitched that haven't I no I haven't I've pinned it gosh I had a panic for a moment let's get that back out I think I'm going to insert this random piece of lace in here. Might have to just unpick that a little bit so that it connects or I bring it in underneath. I might bring it in underneath so that'll work. 
Gosh, I can't believe I was so nervous about doing this project and I thoroughly enjoyed it. My husband, oh, he's hilarious. He's like, finally, you've got into fashion industry. And he said, <laughs> now we could be selling items of clothing for thousands of dollars because you've made them by hand and etc. etc. And I'm like, mate, this will be the first and last denim jacket. You will not get thousands of dollars for it. It's I'm not about to become a fashion designer. Like I just it was hilarious. He I could see the money signs rolling in his head. I'm like, mate, we're all making it. We're all out there. And anyone who would want to swan around wearing doilies <laughs> has probably made a jacket anyway. Because you don't see many of them out there for sale. Oh, I tell you. I'd say probably a bigger area of selling a piece of clothing that's been embellished would probably be the younger crowd. You know, the hipsters who would think it was really cool to have a jacket with... Um, all sorts of fabrics and things embellished on it. I somehow don't think it's the doily, the doily look. I think um, there's only you and me out there that would do this. And even then, I'm sure some of you are watching this video going, yeah, I ain't wearing a doily. <laughs> so that little guy is slithering in there and I'm hoping he works. I could probably go hunting for more, but... Oh. You know, how much stuff do you want to pull out? Okay, so he connects into him. And then this big guy, where is he? Lost him. There, sorry, he comes from this direction. He comes across and meets in there. I could, I could pull this one back a bit. Sorry, you're probably wondering what you're talking about. Let's pin that to that. Yeah, that works. I promise you I will get to the bird as I finish fiddling around here. point do I cut and join okay so he's coming across the top he's just met this guy oh. at what point do I finish this fellow I think I'm going to finish him here so that comes there I do like that little fellow on top of that. That little guy. Hmm. I just feel like it's a bit funny here. I feel like Did I have any more of it? I wonder. Um, I don't know. Just thinking here, guys. If that's cut there, that'll work. No, that's okay. I think my problem is I'm looking through this guy and I'm still seeing that guy. I think if that is trimmed at that peak, this will blend in. Yeah, okay. I'm going to cut it there. And I think that and that will all come together. And it'll be seamless. Yeah, that's better. I just felt like it was really heavy and bulky there. But I think that'll work. I will just need to ensure that this little guy comes right across to there. Yep. And that little guy comes to there. 
and that'll be a soft transition. It looked bulky is my problem. I'll just put a pin there like that. It should hold everything and that should join. Yep, that's better. All right, and then it goes into this lovely lacy one, which then continues along. And this, I'm thinking, I'm gonna take right through because I really like that layered look. So that needs to be unpinned. I guess it's just a case of fiddling it around until you find oh, the right combination if you're doing something along these lines. So I need to bring him back out, get this guy in. When I sit down to actually stitch this, I'll pull it all off again and just work one layer at a time. I'd stitch this fellow on first, this little guy. I like the fact that they are draping. Oh, it's really pretty. All right, so he'll go through to wherever that feels like it's going to end. And then this little guy. Just put a couple pins in there just for visual effect for you guys. That will go there. Oh, I've even got a potential of a corner if I wanted. There's a curve there. Interesting. Let's see what that looks like on the other side. That's that whole doily used then. That's great. And when I get to this end, I've got the potential of doing that. Oh, I love it. It's a swishing up. This little finish there, that will stitch on. So that will be a really nice little layered corner. Let's just pin the whole lot. Okay, so that is my edging nutted out now I just remember this leaf where's those bits the bits from the bits here we go I need once I finish filming I'll cut the rest of this little fellow up and then I just stack them up in my little It's a bit big. What if I break it down to a smaller piece? So it's overpowering that little guy. Just thinking, do I put a piece of check fabric? No. Maybe I've got to bring it down over the leaves a little bit. Um, thought I wasn't on camera, so that's why my arms quickly moved then to drag it up, but we're all good. This little fellow. I don't like that either. Looks like I've just plonked it there, doesn't it? Maybe I'm overthinking it. Hmm. Maybe it's sort of a sit more there. No, I don't know. Oh well, nothing resolved there. I'm moving along. <laughs> I don't know. I've got to think about that. I could stitch another one of those in but they they sort of need a bit of space between them otherwise they don't look right you sort of you can't get too close with them i don't think it just looks like a heap of stitches and you, you you lose the definition of a flower maybe i'm overthinking it maybe when it's swinging around on my body no one is literally going to notice it but i keep looking at it anyway we'll see see what happens 
All right. Okay, so now we've got this lacy thing happening and I want to now focus on my little bird. Let's have a look at my threads. And I definitely want to bring in some textures like cutting into a lace. I don't think no, they're not going to be used. They're going into the abyss of morsels over to the side. Okay, now, how are we going to approach this little guy? I would like to put something on him, but here, hang on. What's this? This is my favourite piece of crocheting. Maybe something can be nibbled out of this. I'd like to see something on his wings. That little shape there to me feels like I could manipulate it on. Let's have a go, hey? And then swish it up there like that. And then maybe bring that in a little bit. Oops, it's going to unravel pretty easily. So one needs to be a little bit gentle. Get a bit of a wing shape. Yep. Okay. Needle and thread. I might go with a really fine needle. Long and fine. It's hard work on your fingers when you've got sore tips of your fingers, but just slices through the fabric really well. I've been using it too to even stitch on this crochet edge because it's fine and it just slithers through the denim. Now I did grab out some beads too because I haven't yet had a play with some bit of sparkle. I'm very, very, very tempted. It wouldn't be me without adding some beads, I think. And let's have a little look. So we've got like this underwing and then we've got this second wing. I have a feeling I'm about to lose that underwing with this. I think that will still work. Okay. So let's, let's stitch at the very top of that wing because the way that feels is it will stretch down a little bit if I am so inclined to make it go lower. When I was stitching the leaves too, I think it was, I was over here, I had visions of going and getting some more fabric and stitching that on top of it. And then stitch on top of that with the actual veins of the leaves. But I didn't. I didn't get up off the couch to do it. <laughs> I had the idea, I'm like, ooh, I could go get a chiffon or something or, an, or a, a net or a hessian thing. And yeah, but I didn't. I was like, come on, just stitch the blooming leaves. It was getting late at night too and there was all these ideas popping into my head and I'm like, no, if you're going to collage, stick to here and stick to the bird. Don't start mucking around with the leaves because I think it would start to get really messy and anyone glancing at it probably wouldn't even notice that the leaves had that extra layer of something. So that was the end of that idea. His tail could have something on it too. Wings and tails on birds are the perfect place to have a play. And I guess I need to decide, is one wing enough? And then just stitch the rest, you know, just a hint of something? Or do I go for it and layer it? Like, oh, how does it ever stop? So I'm just catching that top line. It's great to see all of you that have gone and grabbed a jacket out of the cupboard or found something at a thrift store nearby 
and are having a go at embellishing it. It's really cool. It's a great prompt, ladies. And like I said in my first video, I've been thinking about doing a jacket for ages. But I just haven't been able to commit to a design, a colour, imagery, and put it in the too hard basket. You know, one day, one day I'll do a jacket on my channel. One day, I'll, one day. That Having the girls give you that prompt, it's like, right, well, now I've got to do it. It's just the way it is. What has happened here? Don't you not, you little... Oh, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. What has happened there? How did this, this happen? There we go. It's just twisting. It's twisting in my, as I'm stitching. I should have my little protective fingertip thimble on. Just trim that bit. It's going nowhere. Need to trim that little guy too. I don't think he's needed. Now I'm just going to come back along the bottom edge of that little piece. So as for the rest of the bird, I think I'll literally just gently stitch in a little bit of feathery detail. Just with some short and long stitches, probably a few, if they're small enough, fly stitch. Just to, you know, embellish his little body a little bit more. Won't do anything too heavy, I don't think, because we've got now this lace on him. So you sort of need to be smaller again with your stitches. The chocolate stitch, I think, will come in, that chocolate this guy which will tone it all together because that's through the rows but need to be a little bit careful because he's so pale compared to everything else so they need to take note of what the designer of the fabric has done with their color palette because there usually is a very good reason if things get a bit muted and are pushed back a little bit sometimes there's a good reason there I wonder if I can find a little morsel of something else that can come in over this as well. Just to add a little bit of interest again to the wing, like more feathers laying over it. I feel like I could probably stitch another little bit and sneak down into his shoulder here a little bit more. That lace I don't think is going to make it there. But I love how it's come down this bottom edge. Yeah, that's really good. It's given it a soft little edge to his wing. lots of little stitches to secure your lace if you feel like it's not secure run back along that same line just go and restitch again because it's a joint you can even look for things that are circular because it's a shoulder point or it's not a shoulder, but you know what I mean. When you get to joints of things, you could play with different shapes. Okay, I'm happy with that. I will go through the center and stitch that a little bit more. Just push that back in there a little bit. Needs a little bit more stitching there, but it's all good. Now, oh, hang on. 
Maybe that will work. That's too big, girl. Too big. Leave it alone. Things like these are good. Yeah. See how they've got that shape? I've used these before. Gives you that. Let's see what it looks like. There's another one there next to it that is not a bad little shape too. Yep. Oh, yes. I'm always looking for laces with odd shapes about them. Little geometrical shapes or floralette shapes or, you know, just things that you can cut down into something else to layer in a, to sell a story that you're... As soon as I get this jacket filmed and finished, I really need to start on my March prompt for Susanna's calendar, which is a rabbit. And if you've been watching along with me doing the calendar series, I'm not actually doing the calendar like Susanna, but I'm using all of the different prompts to make something, whether it be just a piece of art like the ocean scene or a page in my journal with the hearts because I have a, a spare page in my Roxy uh, journal because I did a couple journals and a couple pages are free. So it'll catch my hearts the theme hearts and March is a uh, a bunny a hare and I think there's a couple other animals in that series too coming up and a galah and of course I'm not a fan of galahs as you well know so I've asked Susanna to put together some more animals that I could pick from from her big quilt she did of woodland animals so when I get to August and it's the galar, I'll pick another animal. Well, all of these animals, is what I'm trying to say, are going on to the side of one of my Japanese rice bag inspired containers. Now, I did a series of Japanese rice bags last year, but I made them quite sturdy and stiff. So they stand on their own accord. They're not squishy where you pull the drawstring in and use them for a project. Mine are like storage caddies that sit on your desk full of fabrics. And I'm sure you've seen me reach for my French one, my shabby chic one, and I've got a Japanese inspired one with stitching and that. So each side is going to be one of these animals. And Mr. Rabbit is the first one in March that will be stitched. So I um, was going to start it. And then wearables came out and I'm like, no, nah, going to do this jacket, get it done. Because I was just so excited. Now Bunny's next for me to film. And those videos will be playing while I'm away for the first half of March down in um, Ballarat running amok with Susanna. As we, um, she has her retreat on. So I need to get on to Bunny. So I'm thinking about Bunny the whole time I'm doing this project. I'm like, how is Bunny coming together? And then I've got to then think of the future animals. If I do a certain style of treatment on this rabbit, how does that work with the other animals? So the jacket's been great because there's been a lot of stitching here, hours. It's given me a chance, I guess, just to sit and think about my Bunny. So, yeah. I'm thinking I love that little wing on that little bird. It just blends him in to the project. Will I do more on the other wing? Hmm. The problem I have there, I think, is because the wing is behind his body. If I put lace on that, I would have to be mindful that it might bring that wing forward. Therefore, the back of his bird needs to be stronger and bolder. You know what I mean? 
Mm. I'm just going to do a little bit of feather stitch down his tail. I can't, I'm just not even sure if that is the way to proceed, but I'm going to just keep looking at that wing. I just don't know. I'm just glancing up to my TV, my um, iPad projects to a TV on the wall and um, it's good because it gives me that overall view. Let's see what, I've got to be careful the way I push my needle through because this is very close to the edge of the actual piece of fabric. If I put too much pressure on, oh, that was another thing. I ended up going around the whole thing again with a cast on stitch, an overcast stitch. Um, I just felt, because I originally did a running stitch, I just felt like it needed a little bit more. Do I do long stitches or little stitches? Oh, the decisions. I think I'm going to do long stitches. Oh, there's that seam again. Next time I get a jacket, I will be getting one that doesn't have as many feature seams. Like, goodness me, talk about make it hard for myself. a layered stitch in and I really should be focused on the top of the tail the tip of the tail and coming down with those first does that make sense get these big guys in like so Stay at the very tip. Yeah, so I ended up overcast stitching around the whole thing just for that little bit extra because I fussy cut it so close, close to um, the edge of everything. I just wanted to make doubly sure that everything was nice and secure. You know, it's different if it's a piece in a, a frame or a, a journal. When you're wearing it, last thing you want is it disintegrating on you. So I feel a bit better now that I've used just cotton. So it's stitched on as if you would with a sewing machine, just running stitch. Then I've gone over and cast on stitch as well. Just for that little bit extra. Okay, so the next stitch. Do I change colours? Do I? Yep, we're changing colours. Birds' tails will have lots of different colours in them, unless it's a blackbird or a white bird or a bluebird. But even then, you often find you pick up a black feather and you, you look at it closer and you tilt it in the light and you suddenly start seeing purples and, uh, you know, other tones of black. It's very rare. It's just black, isn't it? Or blue. So let's be brave and do a little bit more. Gosh, look at the time, guys. Seriously. But I think we've got a general gist of where we're at with it. And I'm just going to find myself a piece of cake, sit down. 
and enjoy stitching my little bird. He's the next little fellow. So I'm just going to overlay with another thread, another stitch. And then I might do a third color. We'll see what it looks like. I've only got a little space here. Sometimes you can get a bit carried away and all it needs is just a little something, something. As for that wing, I'm still, I'm still not sure. I think what I'll do is I will stitch my little bird, you know, just highlight stitching in that dark chocolate. and see how that sits. And maybe it's just the one wing, the little lacy bits that he's picked up. It's like the rose. I just concentrated on doing all the blue little bits, get all the blue in, mix it up between the Sue Spargo thread and the wool and then come back with the, I did like out of that cream, little white tips because they were the bits that turned over on the, uh, the rose. Where's that fabric? See, see uh, that, 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 and that. I did those in that cream. And it started to give it a little bit of depth Dimension. Gee, I'm sounding like a an art teacher now, aren't I? Okay. So now I've got my classic chocolate, which is through the whole piece. And I'm going to just stitch. Oh, it's right on that seam. I can just get my needle through. Oh, I might do a back stitch, I think. So come up a little bit onto his tail. And then if I can slither between the fabric and the jacket, just for that little bit that I'm over. No, I can't. I'll go down. Sometimes you can slither between the two layers. I'm going to have to just persevere and push that needle. I'd have to bring the pliers out. There we go. Now I'm past it. And I'm just going to do a split back stitch. That way you don't have that running stitch look. It's where you then slide down into the previous stitch and go through the threads instead of the hole of which it came up in. And it just gives you a more continual line. It's great for words, outlining things. Like I'm probably spending too much thought on this because it's going to be glanced at as I'm moving and no one's ever gonna see it, but I think I'll be happier with the finished bird. So I come forward, take a stitch, and then go back through that previous stitch, just a, probably a third of the way along it, just a, a little bit of it. And it just gives me a nice solid line. Now the artist has skipped ahead here with a little gap. I'm going to do that too. I'm not going to join that dark chocolate line to the one I've already stitched. I'm gonna let a little air there. It's probably a technical reason for it. <laughs> so we're going to honor the artist and just follow his lines, her lines, his lines. I'm not sure who did this one. I'm sure it was on the panel. It's been a great panel. Have we got a name on the fabric? I think we do. No, we don't. Because the girl's already snipped it off. What about the other side? No, we don't. 
goodness me. I don't think I ever had it, to be honest. I would have got like 30 centimetres. 2017 was when it was printed. But it's gone. So, so, oh, look at those little flowers. A little version. Gee, I wonder if I could work them in somewhere. Focus on the bird girl. Goodness me. I haven't yet had a play with those, but I will probably just follow suit and just chocolate stitch it, not get too crazy. Maybe I'll get a bit silly in the center. There you go, the, the yellow, that's, that's screaming for something silly. Some, oh, I'd say French knots, but gosh, girl, you've got to remember you're stitching through all of these seams. So French knots would be quite a, a chore, but we'll see. Just get the bird done. There we go. So there's my plan for the bird. When I come back in the next video, I will have made a decision on that wing. Will the wing just disappear? Or will the wing be featured? And now my threads come unthreaded. So on the hour, there you go. That's that's a sign, isn't it? Well, that gives me a bit of homework. I'll finish him. I'm yet to stitch these little leaves, so I'll do all that. Um, I'm not going to do anything with the stem. I don't want it to become too bold. And see how it sort of drifts into the distance a little bit? I really like that. And I won't be able to do that with stitch. It'll just get chunky. So... I will leave the stem alone. There you go, I've said it out loud, so now I can't do it. I will finish stitching my lace around the perimeter, which would be great because that gets rid of all those pins. And then I'm going to stitch that. And then I will decide where we go from there. Do I add more or do I just stop at that? the golden question and in the next video uh, we will either be adding more because the girl's got brave or she will start her scarf because she really wants to make a scarf as well but we'll see we've got plenty of time we're only halfway through the month and I've got plenty of slots allocated for playing with the Roxy prompt so I'm seeing heaps of great bracelets and bangles and cuffs and oh my goodness but I'm pretty confident I wouldn't wear them. So I'm trying very hard to make things that I actually wear and not just, you know, hang in my room. So that's sort of all oh, beads too. If I did any beads, they'd be in around the rows, I think, just to add a little bit of something, something. So I can, I've got the opportunity to play with gold yet because I put this little piece of gold trim on there and I haven't even gone down that rabbit hole. Oh, my goodness. All right, guys. I'm going to say goodbye. One job at a time. Birdie's next. Finish the border and get... Maybe I'll put beads into there, but then where will I put the beads from there? Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. These beads will be smattered in amongst here. Maybe I can sneak a few French knots in and it won't be too, too much. And then maybe I, I sneak back through and put some beads through here. We'll see. Either way, the next video will be more jacket or an update on jacket into scarf. So there you go. All right, guys. I shall see you all in the next video. Bye, have a great day. Hello everyone, I'm back. So, after I finished filming, I thought I'm just gonna put the jacket on and revisit the lace to make sure that I'm really, really happy with it. And this just did not look right. It's like I've introduced a whole different creature. So, I'm taking that off. If it was overlaid over something, yeah, it would have worked. But what I'm going to do 
because I'm going to bring this up and around that corner. I have to put a little pleat, pleat on that corner. I'll just pin it for now because really I've got to, you know, stitch it to see exactly what gets to the corner. And it worked really well, this, because on the other side I've got quite a large scalloped crocheted element. So to have a smaller crocheted element on this side looked really pretty. Where that piece just, did, just didn't look right. So I thought I'd better come back and give you an update because you'll be wondering what happened to the lace. So see what I mean? It just feels like I've got similar creatures now and not a completely different. The other thing is the lace that I had here went right through and it was it just didn't look right. I sort of had it. I think right up to that seam actually let me just bring the camera around. I had it right up to here and it just didn't didn't look right but when I put this little scrap in and finished it just above this guy and not making it to here like this one it looked like it was meant to be just finishing prior to that seam does that make sense visually something just didn't look quite right it looked like it was too long for what was going on this side so I thought right that's it go back my iPad was still sitting in the holder for the videoing so that all right let's spin it around I think you'll agree is a better fit you're probably all sitting there going oh, I don't know don't know about that that one and the, the good thing about it is one is bigger, one is smaller, but they're similar. And it sort of ties in well. You've got to remember that that's probably about four inches apart on my actual body. But it ties in well with the theme. It's similar where this is heading in another direction. As much as I wanted it to feel like it's a mishmash of products making up this trim, I sort of want it to look you know like it's meant to be together does that make sense so there you go there was a slight adjustment I guess it's like when the fashion designers put it on the body they go through a whole change again of you know the piece of clothing gets adjusted and adjusted until it just looks aesthetically beautiful I'm just putting a pin in the bottom here which you guys can't see because I'm out of shot let me just zoom up a little bit. So there you go. So we've got this whole scallop thing happening. I love this just hangs beautifully on me. Oh, it's so pretty. And it's like, this is simple, but there's a lot happening here. This is simple, but there's a lot happening here. And it just, yeah, I really like it. I did put it on with a skirt. I've got like a t-shirt and a skirt on and it hung a bit puckery, but I shot into the bedroom and threw my jeans on. And because my jeans are more tight fitting and there's no bulk, they just hug the shape of my body, this then hung properly. So I was a bit panicky and I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. I've got a, a flary skirt and a, a bulky t-shirt, an oversized t-shirt on, which is adding bulk in around this for, to sit on. And it was just like going, Rrr. I'm like, uh oh, that doesn't work. But yeah, once again, I'd be wearing it with jeans and oh gosh, this here drifting over my jeans, over me butt, very pretty. I love it. So there we are. That's where we're at. Um, thanks for joining me. I will say goodbye now and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye.